We are ever so close to Christmas. Blink and you will miss it. I pray that you and your family have been having a great month of December, had a good Thanksgiving time together. I know it feels so long ago now, but I do hope that your family is well, that you are safe, that you are secure, that you're trusting in the Lord, even if you don't feel so safe and secure at this moment. As the host of the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for being a part of our program today. I started what could become a tradition here on this program on, I believe it was Christmas Eve or thereabouts last year. I read a story. I brought one of my favorite Christmas stories to our audience. It was and is a story that moves me. And I was thinking and praying and talking to the Lord about what he'd have for this next week or so before Christmas. And I believe that he, God, would like us to do something similar again. Now, I don't know if we'll read the same story that we had last year, but I know personally how much I enjoy a good story. I know how much my daughters, now they are four and almost three at this moment, but I know how much they enjoy a good story. And I would hazard a guess that there are many under the sound of my voice that you may enjoy a story as well. You say, hold up a second. This program is called the Bible Tract Echoes Radio Broadcast. This doesn't really have anything to do with the Bible, does it? With gospel tracts, does it? Well, I've always been amazed, astounded even, sometimes, if I'm honest, even perplexed, by what little nuggets God uses in his own special way to draw people to himself. Sometimes there are hooks, if you will, in the water of humanity that catch people's eye, lures maybe if you want to call them that, things that do, in their own way, hook the searching soul. And today might be one of those days. Christmas, one of the greatest times of the year, but so often we forget the true meaning of Christmas. Of course, a word like Christmas, C-H-R-I-S-T, Christ is the reason for this season. And my prayer is that our story that we begin today, I'll be honest, we probably won't conclude it today. It might be two or even three days. But our story that we begin today, my prayer my aim is that it draws you nearer and makes you wonder as you wander at how great a God we serve. The story that I'll share with you is called this, The Burglar's Christmas. We'll get there in just a moment, but because this is the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast, I'm going to share something else that might give some credence to this thought of Christmas stories and how much we enjoy the printed words, printed page. It's called, actually, The Power of the Printed Page. A friend, a pastor friend, shared this with me. I hope it speaks to you. Here's what it says. Have you ever considered how powerful the printed page that you hold in your hand really is? It has been said that the pen is mightier than the sword. This means that what a person writes can be more damaging or uplifting than what a person can do even in battle with a weapon. The written word is also mightier than the human voice. It will go where and when the human voice cannot. Everyone is intrigued with the written word. As you sit waiting for a bus, as you relax in your home, as you have idle minutes in your work day, most likely you will reach for something to read, something to entertain or enlighten you. This is why gospel tracts are so important. They can reach those people who would never think of picking up a Bible or Christian literature. These attractive messages can be put in easy reach of those who who need them. The written word can say what you cannot say in person. It never flinches in the face of any man. 
It never intrudes on a person's time, but is picked up willingly by the recipient and carries its message in a straightforward, matter-of-fact manner that can reach the heart of all. It preaches the message of salvation without condemning the person, but gently allows the Holy Spirit to do his convicting work. Who knows how many have been won to the Lord, not by eloquent words of men, by preaching, but by the simple, prayerful placing of a gospel tract at, a, at the right time in front of just the right person. There are many benefits to using tracts. They are less expensive to produce than entire whole Bibles or New Testaments and can be more directed to specific problems and needs. Some tracts are available in many languages, which can be an important aspect of their work. Tracts are available for the deaf, the terminally ill, the divorced, and those dealing with drug addictions. Tracts can by turns be patriotic or nostalgic. They may be directed toward a, ho toward a holiday or appeal to a specific audience or event. Tracks may be in a comic book format to target children or youth. They may contain a special testimony or deal with a specific issue. Tracts are easy to keep with you. They can be kept in your pocket or your purse. They can be easily concealed. They can be distributed to those with whom you do business daily. A waitress, a clerk at a convenience store, a doctor, or anyone else you may meet. Distributing tracts does not always show immediate results of souls saved, but eternity will reveal how many souls were saved and influenced for heaven by their use. So, why use tracts? Let me give you 10 quick reasons. Number one, tracts can get inside homes and stay there. You cannot. Second, Tracks never lose their temper or become involved in arguments. Next, tracks never flinch or show cowardice. Number four, tracks can stick to the point without compromise. Five, tracks never get discouraged. Six, tracks are willing to travel anywhere and everywhere. Next, tracks can and will work 24 hours each day. Next, tracks are not expensive. Number nine, tracks can be read many times over by many different people. Lastly, number 10, tracks contain portions of scripture which God will use and bless. Why use tracks and the power? of the printed page. I'm going to ask you, if you would, for these next few moments to engage your senses, engage your imagination. Travel with me all the way back to December of 1896 on a cold Christmas Eve in Chicago for the burglar's Christmas. Two very shabby-looking young men stood at the corner of Prairie Avenue and 80th Street, looking despondently at the carriages that whirled by. It was Christmas Eve, and the streets were full of vehicles, florists' wagons, grocers' carts, and carriages. The streets were in that half-liquid, half-congealed condition peculiar to the streets of Chicago at that season of the year. The swift wheels that spun by sometimes threw that slush of mud and snow over those two young men who were talking on the corner. Well, remarked the elder of the two, I guess we're at our rope's end, sure enough. How do you feel? Pretty shaky. The wind's sharp tonight. If I had had anything to eat, I mightn't mind it so much. There's simply no show. I I'm sick of the whole business. Looks like there's nothing for it but the lake. Oh, nonsense. I thought you had more grit. Got anything left you can hawk and sell? Nothing but my beard 
and I'm afraid they won't find it worth a pawn ticket, said the younger man ruefully, rubbing the week's growth of stubble on his face. Got any folks anywhere? Now's your time to strike em if you have. Never mind if I have. They're out of the question. Well, you'll be out of it before many hours if you don't make a move of some sort. A man's got to eat. Now see here, I'm going down to Longton Saloon. I used to play the banjo in there with a couple of old boys. I'll play around maybe for some of his free lunch stuff. You better come along. Perhaps they'll fill an order for two. How, how far down is it? Well, it's clear downtown, of course, way down on Michigan Avenue. You know what? Thanks, but no thanks. Uh, I guess I'll loaf around here. I, I don't feel equal to the walk and the cars. Well, the cars are crowded. His features drew themselves into what might have been a smile under happier circumstances. No, you never did like street cars. You're too aristocratic. See here, Crawford, I don't like leaving you here. You ain't good company for yourself tonight. Crawford, oh uh, yes, that's the last one. There have been so many, I forget them. Have, have you got a real name anyway? Oh yes, but it's one of the ones I've forgotten. Don't you worry about me. You go along, get your free lunch. I think I had a fight in Longton Saloon once. I better not show myself there again. As he spoke, the young man nodded and turned slowly up the avenue. He was miserable enough to want to be quite alone. Even the crowd that jostled by him annoyed him. He wanted to think about himself. He had avoided this final reckoning with himself for a year now. He had laughed it off and drunk it off, but now, when all those artificial devices which are employed to turn our thoughts into other channels and shield us from ourselves had failed him, it must come. Hunger is a powerful incentive to introspection. We are going to continue this story here on the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast tomorrow and likely the next day, but I want to solidify in your mind that picture of a young, broken man there on the streets of Chicago back in 1896. Join us tomorrow. Have a great day for His glory, and God bless. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him. <music>